This chapter is about randomness and also doing simulation using randomness. Now, when we look at the lottery, we could have a machine that selects random balls, or we would hope they are random, to figure out who wins the lottery. And how would we know that the process is random? Well, let's think about how it would not be random. Would the lottery being random depend on how many people who are playing it? No, it would not. The lottery can be random even if one person plays it. It'd be great if only one person played and thus you would win, but that doesn't mean you're more likely or less likely to win depending on how many people are playing. This method is not random because the outcome can be predicted. <laughs> I wish we could predict the lottery, but no. Next, we can look at this method is not random because the outcome depends on winning numbers of the previous lottery. While some people might believe this, that's not really true. This is actually called gambler's fallacy. The lottery is random. And actually, we would hope all balls have an equal frequency. That means any combination of numbers, even 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, is just as likely to win as another combination of numbers. They're just all equally likely. So let's go ahead and select the right answer here. Next, we have students in a class who are going to be assigned states to do a project on. They're going to make a poster of these states. That doesn't really matter, though, because all we're going to do is assign the states at random using random numbers. So what we look at here is the first child goes up and selects their first state. Their first state is 0, 4. So we go ahead and put in 0, 4 right here as their first state. Their second state is 8, 5. Now, in the United States, we only have 50 states, so they can't use this number. Their next state is 2, 7. So we have to cross the bridge right here because this we're just doing it in groups of two. 2, 7 is their next state, and that is a state. There is a 27th state in the U.S. So now we go on to the next kid here, and they get state number 48. 48 is a state. So they can do state 48, and also they will do state 27. But wait a minute here. 27 was already assigned to the first student. So they can't do state 27. They will do state 33. And it's important to know we could look at what the next child would do. Let's go back to the question. The next child, after state 33, would do state 11. And they would also do state 2. And then we don't have any more states in here. We don't have 90, and 92 are not states. You're only using numbers 1 through 50, and 1 is 0, 1, and 50 is 5, 0. 0, 0 wouldn't count, so only numbers 0, 1 through 5, 0. So now, you're taking a quiz with six multiple choice questions. You have an 80% chance of getting the questions right. So what does that mean? It means if I had 10 numbers, and you were to select from them, we'd want eight of those numbers to be you getting the question right, and then two of those numbers you get the question wrong. Now, zero through nine often confuses people, but zero through nine is the same as one through 10, which there's 10 numbers in one through 10. Zero through nine is everything just shifted to the left one. The reason this is done is because now we just have single digits. We don't have to talk about two digits. We can just say zero and nine. And think about it, zero is one and nine is 10. It's a little bit confusing, but allows us to simulate 10 digits with one number. If you don't like the idea of zero being one, just put zero up to 10 because you could just say zero is 10, but that changes the order of the numbers and that would make it confusing to say one through seven and 10 at the end. So let's look at our random number table and see how we did. Now the important thing to realize here is you're only looking for times when we get everything correct. So in this instance right here, how many did we get wrong in these numbers? Five, six, eight is wrong, nine is wrong. This is us taking six multiple choice questions and getting two wrong. Next we see we got one wrong, one wrong, one wrong, and yes, we got it right. Now this is where I'm actually holding my thumb out for one right now because in this simulation of 20 trials, so far we've gotten all the questions right once, and we did not get them all right here. Here we missed two, here we missed one, here we missed one, here we missed one, Another one we missed right here. Here we missed two. One was missed here. Two was missed here. Three, we did horrible. We, were, we had an 80% chance and we missed more than 50%, but that can happen. One was missed here and we got them all right here. So I'm holding two out right now. 
we got two wrong here. We got them all right here because there's no eight or nine. And then we got two wrong here. So we got three out of 20 right. Three out of 20 is 15%. And this is a really, this is a great question. Um, I actually wrote one like it for the test one time. And this one is really great. It's pretty simple. It's pretty quick. You're just looking over to see, you know, in the simulations, if we were to simulate 20 trials, how many times would we get them all correct? Nice and simple, easy question. But now we get to the fun one. If you've ever played the game Sorry, you understand how to do this question. What you're trying to do is move forward 10 spaces. And you can't get more than 10. So if you're one space away, you have to roll a 1. If you're two spaces away and you roll a three, you can't use it. It's like when you get to the end of the game, you keep rolling, but you can't win the game. And then your friend beats you. It's not fun. But with that in mind, there's a lot of ways to do this question. You can print it out. You can take a screenshot. I suggest snipping tool um, and print it out. And you can do it by hand. You can write down the numbers. The best thing is if you have a friend who reads it off to you and says like, one, six, six, three, four, three. You have to be careful because if they make one mistake, Problem doesn't work properly. However, you can copy paste it. It may not look like I'm copying and pasting right now, but I have gone through it and you'll see in a moment I've copy pasted. So now let's go over to our Word document. Here we are inside our Word document. Now something interesting will happen when we paste. You'll notice first I need to delete the O I went through and probably delete the period too. But I have a lot more numbers, a lot more numbers than I need. What you wanna do now is you want to search for one, five, one, seven, six, eight. The reason I say this is this is when the number sequence repeats. What we have going on right here is it doubles up what you've done. So what I'm highlighting right here is a repeat. And I don't know why it does this, but when you copy it in, it doubles the sequence. So I'm gonna delete the repeat. But not only that, it also repeats the second line. So you have to search the second line here, and you notice there's where the repeat begins. So I need to delete off the repeat. If you notice this 7101 is the same at the end here as 7101. And now I'm gonna make it all one line. Okay, so we have deleted all the repeats. That's very important. If you're doing my method right here, you have to delete the repeats of the numbers. Now I'm gonna make them a little bit larger so they're easier on the eyes to see. And now I'm going to delete off all the numbers that are not one through six. So all you need to do now is go in here and just keep deleting every time you get to a number that is not one through six. Hopefully I do not make a mistake because one mistake makes this problem fall apart. I'm going a little bit quickly, but I have done this problem a lot of times. I've probably done this problem a hundred times easily. Um, so for anybody who complains of this problem, just realize I've done it a lot of times. <laughs> and so I've suffered through it too. Um, but it's, it's a good problem because it really shows you the basics of simulation and how we can simulate a dice roll. As you can tell, I'm doing this in real time here, so it doesn't take that long when you know how to do it. Because now we've deleted all the numbers except for one that are not one through six. A quick scan looks like we're good. Now we start playing the game. We have our numbers correct, so we only have numbers one through six. They're random, and let's do it. One is what we rolled the first time. We're now nine spaces away. We roll a six, and we're at seven spaces. So now we need a three. The six would have been too much, so we have to go 10 spaces. We went one space, now we're at seven spaces, and now we go too much, and now we go into the home. Here we are going again. Four and three is seven. We've gone seven spaces. Too much, too much, too much, and then the three is what we needed. And we could have gotten a two or one, but we happened to get what we wanted, which is great. This is gonna be interesting. We go four spaces, and now we're at eight spaces. Too much, too much, and now we're at nine spaces. Guess what that means? We need a one. Whenever you're in that scenario, you can just skip ahead right there and you'll go straight to the first one you see. So now we have six, too much, too much. We have nine and we can skip ahead to the one. Four and five is nine, so you can skip ahead to the one. Four and one is five and five and five is 10. 
You have nine right here. You can skip ahead to the one. Two, 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 three, three is right there. You can skip ahead to the one and you can skip ahead to the one and we're left with one extra number. It looks like we should have 10 trials. Cross your fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now what you must do is count up all your numbers. There are four there. And this is the great thing about using this right here because each stack is going to be the same size. Um, my handwriting is so horrible I couldn't possibly make them all look as uh, equal size had they done this without a computer. So this one has two extra numbers. It took 11 space, 11 rolls of the dice. Oops. And this one took five. And this one took eight. Here we are. We've listed out how many rolls it took. And, and what happened here, I want to explain again, is we're pretending we're playing a game of sorry. It's one of the games where you have to roll so many spaces to get home. And we need to roll 10 spaces. If we roll more than 10, we can't use it. So on our first roll, we can roll anything. You noticed I rolled six here, the first roll, that was fine. But then I rolled six again. You can't move 12 spaces, you can only move 10. Five, I can't use either. But six and three is nine. And that's why I skipped ahead to the one. But you don't always get the one because sometimes you roll a four and a one and then you get the five. So there's lots of instances. The two, two, three, three works because two and two is four then seven, and then 10. You notice I never went over. You can't go over. Just like here, four and five is nine. I can't use three, I can't use five, and then one, I'm home. So now we need to add up the numbers. This is 10, 19, 28, 33, 36, 47, 51, 56, and 64. So this was 64 attempts over 10 trials, and that is 6.4. And let's go see if I've done it correctly. And that is the first try right there. Whoo, it's a fun problem. It's not that bad. Just take your time, go slowly. Now remember, if you copy them, it will double copy both of these lines. This line will get copied twice, and this line will get copied twice. So watch out. You could also type it into your computer. Lots of ways to do it. I think my way right there is the fastest because I've done this a lot of times. But enjoy and email me if you have questions.